Hi, this is Keith with Bob CNC. We all know that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Well, in my opinion, the shortest distance between assembling your E3 and a finished project is F engrave. In this video, I'm going to highlight the basic steps of getting started with F engrave. The cool thing about this program is that it allows CNC neophytes like me to use graphic files bitmaps and JPEGs to create really cool projects. All you have to do is learn how to tweak a few simple parameters and F-Engrave will create a G-code file that can be immediately downloaded into UGS. Learning to do this will also help you practice some fundamental CNC skills like homing your E3 or setting the zero point on your workpiece and the importance of things like speed and feed. Now, before I open the program, I want to remind you to go to F Engraves homepage at www.scorchworks.com and be sure to check out their videos on YouTube. Now, a couple of months ago, I created a graphic file combining the visual elements of the American flag with some Bible verses. I used Microsoft Publisher to create the design and when I got my E3 I wanted to see if I could make an engraving using that graphic file. Now this is what that original file looked like. I converted this into a black and white and saved it as a JPEG. I then opened the JPEG in paint.net and converted it into a bitmap file. Now I did that because F Engrave opens bitmap files and automatically converts them into scalable vector files which makes the final carving cleaner. Now let's open F Engrave. You'll notice at the top left of the page there are five tab settings File, Edit, View, Settings, and Help. By and large, the only two you will use will be the File setting and the Settings tab. F Engrave will allow you to create text files with the program that then can be engraved. But I already have a bitmap file that I want to use. So I'm going to go to the File tab. And I'm going to ask F Engrave to search for a DXF or bitmap file. Now, of course, if I were looking for a JPEG file, I'd want to go down to the search filter and I would change that to all files so it would find the JPEG. Otherwise, it would ignore it. But as it is, I'm looking for a bitmap. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm looking for a folder I've created to keep all my designs. That's my E3 projects file. I open that up and I have a bitmap folder and there's that flag I saved as a bitmap. Now it's going to take just a few seconds for this to download and while it is I want you to notice over here on the left hand side under image properties image height. Now even though the, des the design fills the screen if this were converted right now into g-code the design it would make would only be two inches tall. If you go down to the bottom of the page and look at what's called the bounding box that's the width and height of the finished engraving it's 4.04 .04 inches wide and two inches tall. Now I want my engraving to be a little bit larger than that so I'm going to make it three inches tall and when I select this F engrave will do all the calculations and everything will be changed in proportion I don't have to worry about anything else. What I am going to do though is I'm going to come down to image position and orientation and under origin I am going to select mid center. The reason I do this is because I'm going to be engraving in acrylic plastic and the plastic pieces I get are about a half inch thick but they're in random widths and lengths. And so what I do is I measure from corner to corner and opposite corner to corner and I draw an X right in the center of that piece. And if I know where the center of my design is, I can line that up. 
on the center of that piece and that makes sure for me that everything fits and right now you can see that I have an X and a Z and a Y axis that have intersected right here that tells me right where the center of my design is going to be now I'm going to drop down to G code properties and notice feed rate. This is set up at 5 inches a minute, which would be for an extremely dense, extremely hard material, not like acrylic plastic. My speed, uh, feed rate can be about 25 inches a minute without any problem at all. My plunge rate, that governs how fast the, the uh, router bit is going to drop into the workpiece. And once again, at 25 inches a minute, I'm not going to have a problem. Z safe is the measurement from the very top of the work surface to the uh, uh, engraving bit. Now here it's set at uh, 1 quarter inch or 0.25. I'm going to drop that down to 0.125 so that my bit is always riding about an eighth inch above the surface. And when it comes to the cut depth, I don't want my bit to descend more than an eighth inch into the workpiece. Now remember, the surface of the workpiece is zero. So to go below zero, I've got to go negative. So it's negative 0.125. And my, my engraving bit will now go down, but no more than one eighth of an inch. Now before I recalculate this, there's, a, there's another set of settings that I have to adjust. First, dropping all the way down toward the bottom of the page, once again, left hand side, notice I've got two check buttons, engraving and V-carve. Engraving is what you do if you're going to use a straight, like a fluted bit. I want to do V-carving, so I'm going to select that. And when I do, I get a yellow highlight at the bottom of the page saying the program needs me to do a recalculation. But before I do that, I want to go back up to those tab settings. I want to click settings and I want to open up the v-carve setting box because my v-bit, the, the, uh, the specifications of that bit have to be entered into f-engrave. Now the default bit angle is 60 degrees but the bit I'm using is considerably sharper than that. It's a 30 degree bit. The default width of that bit is one half inch Mine is only 0.125, or an eighth of an inch wide. My depth of cut has already been set. So right there, that's the parameters that I needed uh, to change in the V-carve settings. And I can go down and I can close this. Now having done that, all that's left for me to do, make sure I've selected V-carve. And now I can ask the program to create the G-code file. And I do that by saying calculate V-carve. And we're going to pause just for a moment. All right, we're back again. And you'll notice that the lettering has changed from having an outline on the outside of the letters to be totally bolded. Uh, the black area indicates that which is going to be carved out. The white fine lines indicate the tool path. And what we've done in just a few minutes is we have, number one, we've downloaded a bitmap file. It could have been a JPEG file or anything like that. We've tweaked a few parameters. We've created a, a tool path that's been saved in G-code. And all that's left now is to save the file. So I go back up to the File tab. I select it. And I save my G-code file. And I'm going back to my desktop. I'm going to take my E3 projects file and open it up. I'm going to have a G-code file folder right there. And I'm going to save this. And in just that quick, I've created a G-code file for this project. Now the next time we get together, I'm going to show you how to download this into UGS and how to run this in So until E3. then, Thanks for spending some time with me. See you later. Bye-bye.